from dropping absolute bangers like No Flex Zone and Black no Beatles, Stop. it's becoming so irrelevant that nobody was even aware of their last album dropping. The story of Ray Schremer's downfall is a perfect example of how egos can easily rip a group apart. No matter how close the parties evolved were to each other. Cause as you may know, Slim Jimmy and Sway Lee were just two broke brothers from Tupelo, Mississippi with big dreams. Okay. And an unbreakable bond who would constantly support each other through thick and thin. This is a crazy story. One time he took- That had no hair? Look, the bully of the neighborhood's girlfriend, right? Uh -huh. And I'm the one who had to fight him. <laughs> Even if it meant being thrown out of their mama's house for constantly skipping school to record, they were willing to do anything it took to make it to the mainstream. As time Damn. went on, the brothers team a yeah. group known as them out of- Oh, that his hairline was chopped something for sense of the jit, bro. He was, he was destined to, you know what I'm saying? Or is this one of him? Which one was him? The straight boys in the late 2010s dropped and music that sounded similar to that of Soldier Boy or LMFAO. <laughs> Left with no option but to keep trying to make their dreams a reality, the brothers lived in a house with no heat, no gas, and they kept working day after day trying Rondas. to get someone to pay attention to their music. Rondas. We was living in this little abandoned house and we weren't gonna be sad. I don't got house, no time. We were gonna make worse worse. So we just, hey, making music, inviting friends over, inviting girls over, party, loud music. Sway Lee okay. even claimed that at one point they were so down bad that his ex ended up leaving him for a truck driver. Despite the fact that they had a relatively difficult come up, the two remained adamant on not doing music for money, but rather it would have fun. But in 2013, everything changed. Through sheer persistence and hard work, they somehow managed to grab the attention of Mike Will Made It, who helped Mike them ink a Will deal with Beer Drummer's Entertainment. So the brothers okay. packed up their belongings and started a new life in Atlanta without a second thought. When they heard us and they gave us like an opportunity to leave Tupelo, Mississippi and just come to Atlanta and, and just keep movies. making songs off their beats. What we had, we, just, we left our crib and everything. Yeah. And just took the risk. Kind of like a After Everything. Yeah. Just took the risk. Kinda like a After gay bitch right the there. Ray Schremmer by putting a creative spin on ear drummers, the two would go on to release their debut project titled Shrem Life on January 6th, 2015. And two songs Tough. off this album called No Flex Zone and No Type absolutely exploded no into the no. mainstream. Two songs that combined for a whopping 3 billion views on YouTube alone. Lie. Now, later in this video, which one was it? No type was a banger chat like that beat. I don't got no type. Damn. My type need. How did Swang go? So we'll discuss how hits like these were actually a double-edged sword and would also play a role in their downfall. But it was here where they immediately caught the attention of the mass because it quote didn't sound like anything else. The album hit the ground running, landing at number five on the Billboard charts, nice. instantly making them nice. the life of every party playlist. Next thing you know, the two were everywhere. Cover of The Fader, hey, interviews with Nardwar, Breakfast Club, Nardwar. Tim Westwood, World Tours, Nardwar. you name it. They went from being complete nobodies the year prior to having their songs played all over the radio. Yo, those were, those were both bangers. Critics and fans idolizing them like crazy. Of course, like many overnight stars, they also had their fair share of criticism. Raul Smith. What the f is this? Seriously? What in the actual fuck is this? Is this what you kids call rap music nowadays? This shit is garbage. Ron Smith. You should hear some of this other shit. <laughs> if you think that's trash. Yo, look, bro. I know y'all be thinking I'm an old head shit, but there's something that'll actually probably brain might actually melt if they heard some of this shit that existed, bro. I'm not gonna lie. What the fuck is this? Seriously? What the actual fuck is this? Is this what you kids call rap music nowadays? This shit is garbage. However, for the most part, they remained positive and would constantly maintain the focus of just keeping it simple, making what they thought was good music. Yeah, we just making great music. We ain't trying to make mathematical music or yeah. nothing like that. We just dropping music that's gonna make music. Like, damn. By the time they dropped their Shrem Life 2 project in 2016, it looked like nothing could stop them. Or more accurately, that they could stop the whole world with a track like Black Beatles. Oh my god. Chat. Uh, uh, uh. I am on a real ready tree. That's what it was. I Which gained how it massive popularity. How many views that got? How many views Black Beatles got? Black Beatles. Oh my. Synonymous with the mannequin challenge. That girl is a real crowd piece. 
the mannequin Not only did the track secure his place as their debut number one single, but they were one of the first artists to really showcase how songs can absolutely explode if you couple it with some kind of stupid trend on social media. And mind you, this was literally a decade before TikTok even became a thing. And it started like the whole challenge era. I get a virus Maybe kicked off the TikTok video wave, you know what I'm saying? Before TikTok. Yeah, yeah. pre-TikTok. We made yeah. TikTok. But it was on Vine going to stupid. That at that point in time, Ray Schremmerd were one of the hottest things in hip hop. And between 2014 and 2018, they never released a single that went less than gold over Jesus time. Christ. That's pretty insane. And with that kind of track record, it seemed unimaginable that they would ever part ways. However, the same reasons they rose so meteorically were the same reasons their empire began to crash and burn. That's tough. The first problem Ray Schremmerd began to encounter was something known as the sidekick effect. This is something that a YouTuber by the name of Baba Lamb described perfectly. A phenomenon by which a rapper duo, usually labeled loosely as a collective or frequent unofficial collaborators, I watch that video. rise to fame together in a meteoric fashion due to their strong chemistry. However, as one artist eventually starts to outpace the other in streams or fame, the other tends to be almost forgotten entirely. When you think back to any song that you can remember from the duo, it's one thing and one thing only, Sway Lee's hooks. That's, it was Sway's facts. hook that became a staple amongst the Mannequin Challenge that's videos, facts, which made lie. Black Beatles a number one smash worldwide. That's why and you just gotta like, you know what I'm saying? Why you gotta like, I feel like Quavo, was, the Migos was like that too, even though it was three, everybody just noticed like Quavo, Quavo, Quavo. But then over time, niggas were like, wait, Takeoff is the best one lyricists out of all them niggas. Yo, Offset Loki makes the best songs out of all, you know what I'm saying, over time, and Quavo's Loki, man, like, like I was here with it, over, you just gotta prove it in your song side shit. And the same can be said for songs like No Type and No Flex Zone, all of which Slim Jimmy's verses are pretty forgettable. And unfortunately for Ray Schremer, this is where the problems began. One user summed it up good when- Takeoff had the best flow too, I ain't gonna lie. Takeoff had the best flow, chat. Quavo had, Quavo had, had, had the hooks, you got it. But come on, bro. He wrote, With all honesty, we know Sway Lee is the star of Ray Shrem, and he gave Mike Will a lot more buzz in hip hop ever since No Flex Zone came out. Slim Jimmy is important, but Sway Lee is the main success here. While some fans, out, he gave Mike Will a lot more. Buzz. We all know Sway Lee is a star of Ray Shrem, and he gave Mike Will made it a lot more buzz in hip hop ever since No Flex Zone came out. Slim Jimmy important, but Sway Lee is the main success here. More buzz in hip hop ever since No Flex Zone came out. Slim Jimmy is important. But Sway Lee is the main success here. While some fans truly did enjoy Slim Jimmy's presence, the intensity of this chatter ramped up to the point that they began lashing out against it in interviews. For instance, in 2016, Slim Jimmy spoke to Complex about the forces that he felt were out to destroy their bond and tear them apart. The whole industry is going to do shit to separate us. We got separate tracks because we can both rap. After Black Beatles came out, the secret was out that Sway Lee had the melodies that had the power to move major units. Without even trying, he ended up as a co-writer on one of the biggest smashes of Beyonce's career after giving the idea to Mike Will made it. Oh, Suddenly, shit. Sway had his first Grammy nomination, and that's a feat that Ray Schremmerd have still never managed okay. to this day. But that was only a drop in the ocean compared to the love Sway would give for his work on Unforgettable featuring French Montana. Build the song of the summer almost the second it came me. out, Sway Lee completely carried this track and it became one of the most iconic moments of his entire career. With some joking that without Sway, the song would just be forgettable. Well, the Beyonce is- How'd that song go? I don't even remember. Wait, was, it, was, it, was it Big Chat? Oh, I listened to it. Oh wait, I think I know it then. Oh! This song is so fucking good. This is Sway Lee's song, by the way, French. This is Sway Lee's song, don't get it fucked up. The assist was relatively low key. Having Sway's hook playing from speakers all over the world made him a star in a way that he was removed from the Ray Schremer name. Suddenly, Sway had his own Wikipedia page, while Slim still doesn't have one to this day. With Unforgettable take taking over the world, the talk turned back to the possibility of Sway breaking out on his own, with notable figures in the commentary space such as Joe Budden. Bro, who remembers Everyday Struggle, bro? I used to watch every episode of Everyday Struggle when it came out, bro. Everyday Struggle was him. Saying, hey in Slim group, Jim, in hate group, to break it to you, buddy. Y'all are separating. 
However, the boys continued to maintain that there were no issues between them that had led to this, even confronting Joe Budden face to face for his comments. This is what you said. Jimmy, uh, Sway gonna leave you. Uh, then you, this is how you was talking. When Sway leave you, you just gonna flop. Yeah, you got me man, all the way messed Wait, up. No. We brothers though, you know what I'm saying? So like, this ain't the first time people done said that about me. This been going on for a long time. With everything that was about That's to come, tough. revisiting that moment seems like Sway was maybe- He's like, ah, shit, it our Ah, shit. A little too quiet. As from here, Sway would be a go-to guy from Hooks, while Jimmy had to fend off accusations of jealousy. In the interviews, he tried to stress that it wasn't his low bro success that bothered him, but the world's perspective on how he should feel about it. If people see me out and I have a stank face on, they think I'm mad because of that. So how would y'all feel? If you and a group of y'all niggas and one of y'all y'all go up, but y'all like, they're like way more popular than you. How would y'all feel? Pissed. Jealousy. I'd kill him. I'd be pissed. Here's the thing, bro. You'd kill. Here's the thing. This is why niggas can't play their role, bro. Like, at the end of the day, you're still more famous than everybody else. Like, you're more famous than the average. Like, you're so rich. You're famous. Like, why does it matter that much? Now, if you're trying to prove, you could you could prove yourself in some songs and shit. But like, come on, bro. It's not like you was just some broke dead, like dead weight in the corner, not making no bread. Nah, you still doing your thing. It's just in the public eye, your your brother just getting a little bit more attention. That's like niggas in A and P feeling bad or something, feeling away because Kai's the biggest one. Like y'all gotta learn how to like, you know what I'm saying? Do what it do. I think Kai gets the most recognition in all of them. You think Davis over there salty as fuck that Kai like, you know what I'm saying? Chris? No. But I'm mad because they want me to be mad. I'm always singing Unforgettable when it comes on in the club. But people look at me like, is it okay if I dance to this? There's no competition. We're brothers. Duke at the end of the- Duke what? Why you just type Duke? You happy for each other? Exactly. 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 At the end of the day, all them niggas rich. At the end of the day, all them niggas rich. And more known than the average person. So, like, you know what I'm saying? I just want to know why niggas are saying Duke's name. Like, there was no reason for y'all to say Duke's name. Kai is the biggest member in a &B In every way, in every form, in every shape. Duke gets more hoes. Um, except physically. Okay, of course. Except physically. Today, we're getting a bag. Now, Jimmy might have felt like bag, this bro. at the time, but yeah. around that same period, Sway's mind was likely set on greener pastures, to the point that he wasn't even reserving his biggest tracks as collabs between him and his brother anymore, and was looking for big names like Justin Bieber to fulfill the role he was looking for. But considering oh. that Sway Lee clearly wanted to carve out his own musical identity at this point, it was no surprise that their third album, Shrem Life 3, was a little different in terms of structure. Dropped on May 4th, 2018, the boys dropped an entire three disc album. One filled with Ray Schremer tracks, one made up of solely Sway Lee songs, and another where Slim Jimmy took center stage. The result felt like a compromise, and it made for one of the most inconsistent bodies of work in their catalog. Jesus Christ. While it seemed like the fact that they managed to drop an album together meant that they were on the same page, it would soon become clear that it didn't do anything to soothe the mounting unease between Jimmy and Sway. In January of 2019, just seven months before their third album dropping, Slim Jimmy took to Twitter for an explosive series of posts. Delivered just hours after they had wrapped up a performance in Australia with Nicki Minaj, Jimmy spoke out and formally left the group, saying things like he's not Shrem Life and that he's gonna sink or swim by himself. Even going as far as to retweet a fan who claimed that he was giving the haters what they wanted and responded to someone who said that it had happened because Sway left him off another hit. It basically showed that after years of the world acting like he played second fiddle to his younger brother, Jimmy had enough. When a tweet from the duo's official account said that they were still together after all, he dismissed it. It didn't take long for Jimmy's posts to all be deleted, but there was something broken at that moment that- Bro, look, communication is key, bro. Like, bro, talk to your homies, chat, and your brothers, bro. I, I, I swear, if they just had a conversation like, yo, I feel like this, I feel like that, uh, I- it could, like, I don't know, bro. I don't know, bro. I don't think, like, look, this is some whole ass shit. I ain't gonna care. Like, this is some whole ass shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? You communicate with each other. 
one of them saying, yeah, I want to do some big shit with Bieber and shit. Okay, you could do that, but we still like, you know what I'm saying? It didn't take Wait, long what for Jimmy's what post say? posts to all be deleted. But there was something broken at that moment that the label nor Sway Lee could quite cover up. Even after he told the world that only real ones know what was really going on between them, as well as the fact that they were going to be brothers forever, what definitely didn't help was how the world responded to the news of Jimmy's departure, where everyone seemed like they just didn't care he left. Slim Jimmy is like cardboard in a roll of toilet paper. It's not totally necessary, but I don't mind that it's there. <laughs> ah, that's tough. You know what I'm saying? That's tough. Those, you know, what I'm saying? when if you're new to that, to, if you're new to hate comment, shit like that gonna hit you. Shit like that gonna hurt. But like at the end of the day, that roll of toilet paper in their mind, you know what I'm saying? You. You still richer than all of them, nigga. You still more successful, bro. Like, come on, bro. Don't. I think he he comments is so feels like as if he's in Sway's shadow. Even other rappers such as Trippy Red replied to an IG post covering the story where he wrote, "He finally realized we only listening to Sway's parts." LMAO. Just months after that incident, and with no sign of Shrem Life 4 dropping, Sway Lee would go on to release Sunflower with Post Malone, which was yet again another record breaking hit, and became Sway's first track as a soloist to hit number one. So oh, Sunflower went. <laughs> now that nigga Sway Lee, he know how to make a song, bro. That nigga know how to make a song, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Since then, it's gone on to have the fourth highest streams in that Spotify history song, with nearly 3 billion. This would be another what? notch. Highest streams in Spotify history with nearly 3 billion. This would be another notch. The Kid Leroy has a song that's one of the most. Hey, man. Highest streams in Spotify history with nearly 3 billion. This would be another notch that would lead the, the industry. The RXMKS truck is Slim Jimmy hardest solo song. And making a case for Sway Lee as king of the hooks. As not only being one of the most valuable guests in the genre, than Sway Lee, but once chat. again, the driving force behind Ray Remmer's success. Once again, there need to be a tier list of one of the best hooks of all time. Yo, or, 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 or a versus. Somebody need to make a versus a, a ooh woo foo foo best hooks of all time. <laughs> That'd be fine. And it felt like Jimmy was being collectively kicked while he was down. So the best At the same time, time, he would still return to Twitter again to cite that he and Jimmy were good that artist, and that more solo like, work was on the way, as well as the long awaited Shrem Life 4. Yeah, that'd be too hard though, so you might have to go by each artist. Best best hook of Drake, best Drake hooks, best future hooks, best I don't know. But as we would learn, this was a half-truth at best. Whether he had intentionally did it and then the winner of e I don't know. I don't know. Or not, Sway Lee left his brother struggling to get any semblance of credit for everything they had achieved. Meanwhile, he reaped the rewards of that time period where it seemed like everything he touched just turned to gold as Jimmy's life began spiraling out of control. Over time, he had numerous scrapes with the law, including what? his involvement in a brawl where a man was stabbed and he was seen fleeing covered in blood. Later in 2022, he was arrested on domestic battery charges with his baby mom Mama posting receipts online. While this was all going down, Sway Lee's solo album still failed to materialize, and some of his singles like Sextasy never really took off, even with the help of a Drake feature. In fact, that huh? would spawn a legendary a Drake feature? meme from Joe Budden. Hey Sway Lee, <laughs> hear me and hear me good, nigga. I'm here to double down. That shit is a, a two pack of ass. <laughs> I remember this meme. Oh god, damn, that's tough. The fuck are you talking about? That shit stinks. With tracks like these failing to launch, it looked like Sway's hopes of releasing Human Nature, which he once built as a revolutionary project, were dwindling. It's gonna be huge. Like, I'm breaking all the rules. I'm breaking all the boundaries. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like making my own song formats and everything. Like, doing some production on there and everything. Got crazy features. Like. Some of my favorite artists are on there, so. But soon, music would be the furthest thing from either of the brothers' minds huh? when tragedy would strike. After horrific news broke that Sway Lee's dad passed away, and you'll never guess who pulled the trigger. My dad, my pops, he passed away recently. I have three brothers. Allegedly, the police say my youngest brother, he shot my dad, like, killed my dad, like, and it's like my brother killed my dad. It's like unbelievable, like, you can't even imagine, like, it's. It's like something out of a movie, you know? 
I'm still dealing with it. Like, I don't even know how to deal with it all the way completely. Like, it's traumatic, like, but it's like, it just put like fury inside you. It put, it put like fire inside you. Left to grieve their father and all the pain that came with their family being destroyed like that, Sway Lee's output slowed down to just random features while Slim Jimmy remained inactive. Eventually, the two would regroup and reunite publicly, finally dropping Scrim Life 4 in April of 2023. But looking at the less than stellar reviews, the absence of a hit song, and a chart position peaking at number 12 stellar reviews, That's tough. The absence of a hit song and a chart position peaking at number 28. It seemed like the peak of their musical career might be behind them. The album performed worse than any of their previous works in terms of first That's week tough. sales. And that unique spark and excitement that used to define their music isn't as vibrant as it once was. It is the most terrible race remembered project yet. I am feeling a light two on it during the promo circuit for the album sway basically act bro everybody has their time bro everybody has their peak bro that's tough that's tough like, that just is what it is on this entertainment shit everybody has a time where they're on top and then you know what I'm saying? Like it's his tough. solo run didn't ever threaten to eclipse. Some's is way longer than the others. Some's is short. Some is cool. Some is like somehow like till they die. You know what I'm saying? Race remembered and that it was always God, about damn. the duo. No matter what I do, like I always think about race remembered. You know what I'm saying? I want to be race remembered. Like you know what I'm saying? But even when I'm branching off doing other things, it's like I'm always coming home to race remembered. You know what I'm saying? Like race remembered is my baby, my base. Like shit, me and bro, we rocking. We came out the hood together. As for Jimmy, the time away from the spotlight gave him time to reflect on the sense that Sway was more important to the group than he was. And for a while, Jimmy totally believed this to be the case too. But I felt like I wasn't carrying my weight as an artist and, and I'm very um, critical of myself, you know what I'm saying? I never even felt like it was a, a thing of importance because I'm not in competition with him. Like I'm, I done made it from nothing. We came from Mississippi. And like, it's we crazy, what was the pen? We made it so far away. Even if the industry was happy to leave his brother to slowly sink into obscurity, Sway Lee wasn't going to do that. And not enough credit is given to him for standing by his brother's side. Maybe it was regret over what had happened, his father's death putting things into perspective, or Sway realizing that the brand was simply stronger together. They're back together for better or worse. At the moment, both- <laughs> Ray Schremer is two niggas? <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, uh, no, yeah, yes, yes. Wait, wait, no, yes. Race, wait, yes, bro, yes. Yes, bro, yes, bro. Both of them are talking about solo projects, but the buzz for those is way lower than it would have been in previous years. Good video, my boy. Told a lot of stuff I didn't know. Thank you. Louisiana, appreciate that video, gangie.